so uh, we worked together with Aborigine Australians to undertake the first genomic study on the peopling of Australia. And uh, this study uh, addresses a number of fundamental questions in human evolution. How many times did we leave Africa? When were Australia populated? What is the diversity of people within and outside Australia? And uh, it's a very fascinating uh, research project because we're talking about one of the oldest living human populations on Earth. So this is the first population genomic study on Aborigine Australians. It means the indigenous peoples in Australia. And um, it tells a remarkable story. First of all, there's been a long discussion of how many waves of modern humans do we get out of Africa, because we're all coming from Africa originally. And some people have suggested, you know, it's multiple waves. But there we find evidence that it's actually only one wave of humans uh, giving rise to all present-day non-Africans, including Australians. Uh, but the Australians, as soon as people are getting into kind of the Middle East area, the Australian ancestors seems then to take off, you can say, before even uh, we get Asians and Europeans established, right? So they take off very early and they're reaching uh, the so-called Saul continent which is uh, when Papua and Australia was physically connected to each other. And in there, very quickly after their landing there, which is already 50 to 60,000 years ago, then they start splitting up into, you can say, smaller groups that don't have much contact with each other. So today, Papuans and Australians that are, you know, most closely related populations, right? Uh, they are actually as genetically different from each other as is Europeans and Asians. So, uh, and then, uh, you know, around 30,000 years ago, we still see another fragmentation of people in there due to the formation of the central desert. So we actually get that Aborigine Australians are genetically as different from each other as is, for example, or even more different from each other than is Siberians and Native Americans, for example, within the same continent. And this is, of course, because people have been there for a very, very long time. I mean, they are leaving Africa maybe 70,000 years ago, something like that. And these guys are getting 10,000 years after, at least 10,000 years after, they are getting isolated in, in Australia and Papua, right? So there's a lot of time to actually separate further, etc. So it's a very diverse uh, group of people. Then we are addressing, uh, you know, a long-standing controversy in, in, in Australian uh, archaeology and, uh, and linguistics, namely that around some four to six thousand years ago, you start seeing a, a culture, a, a change in culture, stone tools, etc., across Australia, and you also believe to have a change in the language, into something called the Papua Union speaking family. And it has been a big mystery. How can you have a continent that has been populated 50, 60,000 years ago and where you can say the language spoken by most of the people is not older than four to 6,000 years ago. But there we can see it seems to actually come from northeastern Australia where you see a gene flow, I mean a movement of people around four, five, 6,000 years ago spreading across the continent and basically leaving uh, genetic signatures across the continent and it fits very nicely of course with that is the time where this language, uh, new language is spread as well as the new culture. And it's pretty remarkable event because it's a tiny genetic signature so it's almost like you know two men entering uh, a village and saying well guys now you have to speak another language and uh, have to use another stone tool right and they have a little bit of sex in that village and then they disappear again. So. I mean, we have never seen anything like it in prehistory before. Um, I, 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 to me, it, it kind of reminds me of a situation like the British coming to India or something, right? Where a very few people has an enormous impact, culturally and linguistic impact on, 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 on the population. So I don't know what has kind of triggered this. I mean, it could be maybe a religious event, uh, something like that. We don't know. But it seems to, I think it's very likely it's related to this 
population expansion and spread across the continent from northeastern Australia. We can also see that Australia has, this is another thing that has been heavily debated, uh, how isolated has Australians actually been, I mean, from the rest of the world. And it really seems like until, you know, from 50 to 60,000 years ago when they are entering, people are entering Australia and until just a couple of thousand years ago, it has remained almost completely isolated from the rest of the world. There's a little bit of gene flow between Papua and Australia, northeastern Australia, but that's it. I mean, until then, only a few thousand years ago, then we start first seeing some Asians getting in there from Southeast Asia, and then, of course, Europeans later on. But in all that time, tens and tens of thousands of years, these guys seem to have been actually living isolated from, from the rest of the world.